Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I am your host, Corbin, with my co-host, Tate. And today, we have a fascinating story for you guys today. Now, typically, Tate, we normally cover just, you know, altcoins outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yes. Because technically, Ethereum would be considered a altcoin. Of course. It's an alternative to Bitcoin. Yes. However... They already receive a lot of publicity and stuff, so we figured we'll kind of stay out of that space and give more room for the smaller, you know, creators. The smaller cap coins that need room to grow and need uh, they need, need a little room. bit of publicity. Yes. Get the word out yes. about them. More yes. eyes on them. Exactly. Of course. Yeah, but this story has gotten so big and it's gotten sort of like pushed down, like the Hunter Biden story. That like. <laughs> People, more people need to be talking about yes, this. Yes, yes, indeed. It's very, sure. very controversial, and there's a lot of points that need to be proven. Yeah, exactly. And Yes, without a doubt. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm just shocked, more or less, to see all of this play out the way it is. Exactly, and as more time go- has gone on, it's gotten even more spicy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's crazy to see. Yeah. But you want to... Yeah, so... Last night, I was sitting on my couch downstairs, sure. just doing my occasional scrolling through Twitter, as I tend to do every single night, just seeing what's up in the crypto space. Sure. Next thing you know, my 16-year-old brother comes downstairs, and um, I would never expect this because, I mean, we all know I'm pretty big in the space, sure. and I try to get him big in the space all the time, but he's, he's just, he's 16, he really doesn't know much about it nor is he he's into his own things let's put it at that sure. and he Makes comes sense. down to me uh downstairs he's like you hear about what's going on with those monkey nfts i said you mean board api clubs he's like yeah he said they're a bunch of nazi ponzies and so today we're gonna have him on this is gonna be our first ever live guest yep. on the all kings podcast yep. and here he is ty give it up for ty going on what's happening my man how are you doing today um doing all right you know here to talk about racist nfts <laughs> all right getting straight to the point i see <laughs> yes sir um but yeah basically my brother um i just i went downstairs after i watched the documentary and i was like shocked because it's like i hear about this like my brother's like into it and then all of a sudden i hear that like the one of the biggest one probably like the biggest uh projects of nfts is literally like based around like I know it's like a big conspiracy and stuff, but it's a lot of like facts and like you could you can't just rub everything off and say, Oh, this is like going too far or you know what I mean, too conspiracy. It's exactly there's a lot of there's a lot of plausible deniability, but there's also just so many things just like boom 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 exactly. boom at what point are you like guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. I don't have an NFT or anything like that. Like I'm young, I don't really understand it too much but when i hear about that stuff and like i see like jimmy Fallon's promoting it and like eminem it's like wow that's like you know it's on a big scale and it's it's like promoting that stuff and it's like wow i mean yeah how do they get that on there it's like a big yeah. troll you know what i mean it's, it's a hard question to think about like are they blind to it all yeah or do they know what's going on behind the scenes yeah yeah it's pretty crazy yeah. what are your thoughts what are my thoughts? It's like it kind of makes me disillusioned about the whole NFT thing. Like I'm, I'm confused. Like it makes me like if I ever were to get into the NFT stuff, it makes me want to move away from it because I see that it's like based around like that other projects could be like this, and it's kind of, it kind of makes the whole uh, NFT you know side of things like rubs it off the wrong way, and I it makes it have a bad image, I guess you'd say, especially because it's like one of the bigger ones, and it's just pretty evil of them to do something like that if it is the case yeah but that's that's also why we need more people in the world like Ryder rips who's the guy that's the rr part of our rbayc who are actually you know putting a spotlight on this and saying like uh guys um what the heck is this exactly dude <laughs> it's like crazy yeah like, exactly I mean, it's absolutely insane how they could get away with this and like get it onto a bigger scale. Like, imagine that it's on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Literally, yeah, the I NFT. I saw that episode. Yeah, it's like 
And then if somebody were to do the research, like a mother that was watching Jimmy Fallon and to sure. see this, they're like, I don't want my son anywhere near NFTs. You know what I mean? That would that's like a big thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this, this could ruin the whole image of NFTs if it gets out there anymore. I think it could go one of two ways too. Like because there's two always two sides to the coin, right? Exactly. So like there's going to be the side of well, this this is going to make everything look bad. This is going to put a really bad bad light on everything, and everything's gonna everything's no bueno, right? Then there's the other side of the coin that by putting putting a spotlight on this one particular instance, what if it actually generates a new sort of fresh, you know, better culture yeah. for NFTs? Because you know NFTs have grown to the point now where they're like there's like a whole culture in and of itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean exactly. Yeah, I mean it could make it into a better thing. Maybe like where it, get, it becomes less of like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of less toxic. Let's yeah, it, it eaves out the toxic stuff and like yeah. the four chan and all that evil stuff, and it makes it more into like a positive thing. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, I understand. I watch when I watch the documentary. Like it definitely goes sometimes overboard, but it's like you have to do that sometimes. Yeah. You have to go overboard and look at every little thing. Yeah. Um. Because at the end of the day, it's up to whoever's watching to make their own determination about like, ah, that's a reach or like millions, oh. <laughs> millions of dollars. And that's oh, billions, billions, billions. billions. Yeah, billions. this is the largest NFT project to scale. Exactly. Yeah. And to have it based around like, and I understand some of the client. Like I uh, when I wa I looked at the logo. It's like, all right, this is kind of. But then you look at the outside and it's like themed just like the uh, yep. the emblem. It's like Jesus. Very, it's bad yeah we'll have a we'll have a photo that i'll edit in right right here 18, 18 teeth yeah Literally. so like this is we're gonna have a picture of the official board apes logo and then right next to it we're gonna throw in the bad stuff that it's related to exactly it's absolutely insane the ss token off yeah the name of that patch there's like video games around it and stuff it's like literally a large-scale thing yeah and it's absolutely like it's Evil. it's very big with biker gangs as well. So yeah. so the very white supremacy, very far alt right style biker gangs. A lot of times the patches they'll have on the leather jackets are going to feature some sort of imagery from that. Yeah. And like there was, uh, they were like saying like because they are, um, I think of like race that they, you know, like wouldn't be racist because they're all like uh, it's like you can be multicultural. Yeah, you yeah. can be multicultural and be racist. One hundred percent. There's like stuff like that that is thing like you yeah. know what i mean you can't just like shove it off yeah it happens all like racism happens all around the world yes. not just in the u.s i think in the u.s it's a little overblown you know but at the same time it doesn't mean that it's you know non-existent like we have to be real here exactly. right? you like you you're looking at your uh your youtube feed and it's like you see like board ape nazi club you're like <laughs> interesting okay <laughs> it's like i've seen these monkeys everywhere like these monkey nfts and it's like and you look at some of these claims and like the little details and everything is just like, wow, this is like a big troll. I think yeah. it could be. You know what I mean? That's absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's basically it. I was just, I was absolutely well, just shocked. Yeah. Well, you. We appreciate your input, Ty. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. Well done, sir. Well done. He's growing up so fast. <gasps> <laughs> Let's get straight to business. Yeah, we should. So, why, Tate, why don't we get everybody up to speed real quick? Yeah. Sort of refresh everybody's memory on this, because I'm sure most people that have watched, that are going to be watching this video, have seen the documentary. Majority are coming from Rip Riders, B, B, A, B, A, what have you Anyways. Hi, do you English, sir? No, I don't. <laughs> Everybody's coming from Rip Riders community, more or less. Rider rips. You'll get it one day, Tate. I believe I'm in you. I'm just shocked my brother came on. I'm very proud yes. of him. Yeah, he did great. Yeah, so why don't we just give everybody a quick rundown real quick, and then, because the documentary already covered a lot of the points really, really well, really well detailed, yes. found a ton of footage that would take forever to find, Yes, just to say the least on yeah. that, um, and I, I think we should probably focus more on the, the response from Yuga Labs and what they included, and what, more specifically, they didn't include. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's astonishing how bad it is from you know this multi-billion dollar corporation at this point that they could fumble the ball so hard on this no without <laughs> without a doubt so one of the first questions that they asked or were asked why does our nft collection feature apes wait 
before we go into the response, let's talk, let's go on the recap first. Okay. Yeah. So for, so if you go on a website called GordonGonner.com, I'll have the spelling right here for you. The they give sort of a I, I can't remember if Ryder wrote this or not, but they essentially sort of lay out all of the claims about why it's racist. So yes. you can determine whether it's a reach on your own or not. But, you know, at what point does, you know, so many subsequent things adding up to each other actually equal a fat L for Yuga? A logical case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A logical case. Exactly. So obviously we talked about the logo before. I'll place it again. 18 teeth, one and eight is Adolf and Hitler. It's also used very frequently in the biker communities that are alt right. They'll actually put 18 teeth on the on the teeth on their jackets. Like yeah. this is a known thing that the ADL has Racist. put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For racism. Yeah. Exactly. After scrolling through tons of Google image results and going to a few websites that have like databases of biker patches and all that kind of stuff, I grabbed all the ones that popped up to me that I feel ob have an obvious um, relation and then kind of work backwards from there to look into the group. Uh, the motorcycle club to see um, what they're all about and these were the ones that i was able to come up with i think this one is fairly self-explanatory it's a big <laughs> red swastika it's it's yeah uh, here's another one this is the gypsy joker um, they are a west coast outlaw motorcycle club with neo-nazi ties and here's one other one called the blood and honor social club um, blood and honor i think kind of indicates to you what they're all about That's and then the uh, the company that launched the project, Yuga Labs. Yep. Kali Yuga is a popular element of the alt-right traditional ideology of Yuga Labs and has gone to effort the embed of traditionalist philosophers. Rene Guénon. Mm. Who is credited to bringing, all, uh, bringing Kali Yuga into Western thought as an alt-right icon inside of one of their puzzles and also embedded in the world's Mac and own racial slur. Also embedded Make. is the word Make. makake, and makake a racial sorry. slur. Yeah, 100%. I don't want to say it all right. Uh, I, okay. I don't want to be I, racist more I or less. Your, yeah, yes. uh, fair, fair. <laughs> but I mean, is it, I believe it's also a, a actual species sure. of primate. Oh, no, primate. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. And then one of the other, one of the co-founders of the company, known as Gar Gargamel, <laughs> is a character from the Smurfs. Yes. And he is a known anti-Semitic depiction of a Jewish person, and I will have a photo up of him here. Used on 4chan to discuss yeah, Jews. Yeah, used very commonly on there. And then his, his real name is Greg Solano, who wrote his undergraduate thesis on fiction about Nazis and expressed interest in incorporating a character like Hans Reiter into his writing, who was a SS officer in the Nazis. Another co-founder, Emperor Tomato Ketchup, has his name as the explicit film from 1971 that features scenes as a boy in a fascist uniform raping an adult bride. The original film is banned in the U.S. and other countries on grounds of child pornography. As it should be. Yeah. Getting straight into Gordon Goner. Repicted. I don't even want to say this. I'm not saying it out loud. We'll have a photo of it yeah. here. Not touching that with ten yeah, foot pole. Yeah, no. You nope. if you watch this podcast, you see it right now, and that's the reasons why we don't want to say that out loud. Yeah, yeah. You'll see. Anyways, he picked the name because it sounds like Joey Ramone, as he states. Being that group uses anagrams, and it doesn't at all sound like Joey Ramone. Maybe this is an anagram. Sure enough, this is a whole word anagram for what we've shown. That. <laughs> <laughs> a common Ford trend and an Australian slang for stupid. It is a dictionary such as second uh, second definition, so his name means stupid. S okay. Writers often use anagrams for characters' names as they often incorporate within video games. This is terrible. Yeah. This is outright terrible because, like, everything that we're already stating adds up as outright factual as possible. Yeah, and then the the last co-founder known as Sass, S A S S, which what, right? <laughs> if you look into uh, Nazi history a little bit, the S A or 
I will insert my German friend's pronunciation of this because I will butcher the heck out of it. Sturmabteilung. Was the Nazi Party's original par paramilitary wing and SS or... Schutzstaffel. Again, I'll have my German friend's <laughs> way of saying this because I will butcher it. Was the primary paramilitary Nazi wing. So his name, Sass, combines the two military Nazi military divisions. Now, he hasn't said this officially, I will say, but like... <clears throat> like yeah what <laughs> yeah yeah their video game i mean if you're in the nft space you've definitely seen the trailer to their video game yeah with the ape swinging back and forth in the hammock yeah and they were on the cover of the rolling stone yes yep very big magazine. um their video game is also featured bananas arranged to look like swastikas personally i think that one might be a smidge of a reach of course but, but there's always some sort of small detail hidden behind the scenes sure and there very well could be and I mean, you also have to look at it like this. They might do all these things and we're, uh, somebody is out there finding all the their own personal ideas of what it could be and what it couldn't be. But like for us to be able to find so many specific details in this project that make all of the right sense, it just doesn't seem like it's not racist in exactly. one little bit. Yeah. You know? And here, get this. So we're going to skip to number 10 sure. so for the interest of time. So, number 10, in, in an interview with co-founder Gargamel, yes. he admits that nothing in the collection is random, and there is hidden <laughs> encrypted meaning and referenced iceberg theory. In the same interview, Gargamel cites a Ludwig Wittgenstein quote, let the unutterable be conveyed, conveyed unutterably. Evil. Seems strange if they are just cartoon apes. No. What are their other meanings? They've yet to explain and seem very evasive. The alt-right is known for this tactic of hidden images and innuendo. innuendo. And then I'll also have the, the full quote here, so that way you can read that as well. Yeah. So, it's been pretty bad. Uh, oh, also another thing, too, is the, the Board Ape Yacht Club was... So, they say that they were created on April 30th. Yes. The day Hitler died yeah, was, was April 30th say, yes. of, of whatever year, right? So the project actually was launched a week before that and sold out in like two or three days. Wow. But whenever media asks them when was the Board Ape Yacht Club founded, they always say April 30th. On top of this, they decided to found their, their metaverse project, The Other Side, also on April 30th. You know, turns your head doesn't look good. No, right. So definitely highly recommend checking out the documentary. It's very, very detailed. It's very, very, it's fascinating to see like all the little connections and stuff happening. A beautiful documentary that explains so much and another, a beautiful website, gorengonner.com. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, Philion did a great job on that documentary. After coming out with both of these, sorry for interrupting. You're good. You're good. After coming out with both of these, it's really opened up. BAYC and turn their heads immensely because they realize they're getting caught up. And exactly. And they wouldn't just, if this wasn't something that serious, one, they wouldn't sue somebody. Yeah. And two, they wouldn't be talking about it on their own website. Exactly. You know, because I mean, people would try to make mock up board API clubs all the time. Yeah. But this has turned so many people's heads and yeah. it has created a snowball effect. So for, for those who don't know, there is a artist by the gentleman of Writer Rips who has done a lot of album covers. He's been a creative director for Kanye. Like, they're, like, guy's well-connected. He knows what he's doing. Very he's, much so. He's got a lot of cool art pieces. He actually partnered with Red Bull about this one, where, like, you're, you're basically, like, there's these artists that are essentially in, like, a cubicle, sure. and people walk by it, and it's essentially just a voice of them, like, saying who they are while they scroll through a social media feed as a representation of, like, you know, taking away your humanity and what you're boiled down to in, you know, a Web3 style environment in, yeah. in social media. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Really cool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> enough of me gushing about writer's work. He actually, he basically created a copy NFT creation. Now, it's not necessarily a copy copy. It's, it's kind of a weird gray area because he essentially created a separate collection that points to the same images that the bored apes are in. So 
the way that NFTs work is the images are actually stored on a server known as an IPFS server. And essentially the NFT points to that image and then that's how you can see them in your wallet. Yes. Right. So basically he created a separate collection which has a separate contract address. So you can see that it is not an original board ape. It is just using the original photo. Yes. That's on the IPFS server. Right. So from that, it's created a lot of controversy in the space about ownership. And, you know, you can't copy an NFT. You can't. There's 10,000 board apes. They're on the same contract address. Nobody else can mint on them. No, it is literally impossible to mint a, you know, the same NFT. Yes. The only thing that's going to be same is what they look like. But the problem, uh, what people don't understand is, yes, they might look the same, but the utility is not going to be the same. Correct. Yeah. Like what? Well, like when when we bought our RBAYCs, we didn't expect to, you know, get ape coin and oh, get no. a mutant ape. No, I didn't whatever. want any of that stuff. No, neither did I. It's about the movement. Exactly. Yeah. It's about following the voices behind this. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of moving parts happening here. So if we dive into the letter from the founders. A letter from, that nobody thought they'd ever see. Correct. Yeah, nobody ever thought it was going to get this big. Yeah. And then it just started blowing up. Yeah. Like, went all the way up to like one and a half ETH on OpenSea until uh, you could file a copyright claim against the the collection, which is hilarious because Ryder already won a DMCA request takedown from Yuga before. Cute. Got delisted six times off of OpenSea. Uh, got delisted, I think, four four times off of OpenSea and twice off of X2Y2. Gotcha. So six yeah. times total, but I think we'll be safe on looks rare though. Cause those, those guys are actually like serious about decentralization. They don't take yeah. junk from nobody. Yes. Right. Thankfully. Yeah. So going into the, the letter from Mr. Gordon Gunner, why does our NFT collection feature apes? The long history of people affectionately referring to themselves as apes in crypto or aping into a particular project, which is why some of the rarest and most valuable NFTs in the CryptoPunk collection, which date back to 2017, are the ape variants of the CryptoPunks. Yes. Makes sense. Once again, I think a lot of plausible deniability here for the just solid fact that they are apes as an animal. Of course. Sure. Whatever. Right? It's, It's just art. But it's, it's just, yeah. But it, it's what's behind the art is what no, really matters. Yeah, I'm not trying to devalue anything else here. I'm of just course. saying that this one little particular thing yeah, is yeah. just, yeah. you know, make, some plausible deniability. People make NFTs on all different types of animal collections. Sure. But it's just about what you're throwing behind these NFT collections and the little details. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is something, the number two point is something I think is where they begin the fumble, where the fumble <laughs> is happening. They got the ball in the hands and they're starting to, to juggle it a bit in the air and it's about to, it's about to get tossed it's out in the, the air. It's not the ball, it's the egg. <laughs> Fair. So he says, we never wanted to take ourselves too seriously, so the look of the club is ramshackle and divey. Everything about the BAYC was meant to convey a spirit of irreverence and absurdity. Like hey, we're going to do this thing and like, you know, just explaining the idea. And I kind of giggled and was like, oh, yeah, I mean, but people are just going to draw penises. And that was it. Like, I was just like, I didn't think anything of it. We hung up. But like the stupid thing that I said that I never would have thought about right. transformed into, well, what if they do draw pen penises? Yeah. And where do people draw penises and you know it turned into well it's a bathroom right you know it's a toilet stall and it's a dive bar and but it's not a dive bar it's a yacht club that's a dive bar but it's in a swamp and it's going to be this like future vision of miami and you know it's all of these like bored apes okay i get behind that it's a yacht club Try not to think about the edit that somebody did of the CEO talking about what it was. <laughs> it's a yacht club that's actually falling apart and smack dab in the heart of the Everglades. As such, it is it needed an appropriately grimy, intriguing logo. We went with an ape skull to convey how just how bored these apes are. They're bored to death. Okay. And then 
below is the email to the the logo designer saying what they wanted out of the logo and sort of the direction that they wanted to see out of the logo right yeah. and about the references they wanted and you know you can see the references they're quite interesting yeah i yeah. feel like this email half of it was mocked up after the fact it's a possibility. I think. I think if you look at the bottom picture of the, uh, the, the yes, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about specifically. Is that skull? Yeah, it's a little. It'll be obviously right up here. Yeah, it'll be right up here. And he says, "I've I suck at mocking stuff up." Yeah, like that was a part of you know the email. No, no, no. I don't believe this. Not for a second. This is completely made up. They're lying flat out. They're just lying. You can't, you can't get there from this. There's nothing maritime about this, apart from the fact that it says Yacht Club. The frayed edges in the official design, which is not at all common. Like, how do you get that? Yeah, I want it to be a skull in the center of, like, a, a, a life raft, and then, but nothing maritime remains. The fact that, like, the text is curved on the bottom and top, just like it is in the original Nazi symbol, but... Especially since, keep in mind, the twin lightning bolts here on the Totenkampf, the SS, that is an abbreviation. Like, remember? The SS, the Stoffel, whatever, the se their, their, their secret police, the, the, the higher-up. B A Y C Borda Yaka. It, it it serves the ex not only does it follow the same like typographic design, the type of lettering is the same in terms of like linguistically what it conveys. It's and then it's like oh well it's a circle so it's like a life raft. No, I I don't buy it for a second. I don't. I not. Nope. 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 Okay. So it, so just coming coming to the bottom part here. The Nazi to, to uh, the Nazi Totenkopf is the is one very specific graphic design of a skull and crossbones, and the monkey skull resembles it in no way except insofar as all skulls resemble each other to a certain degree. Mark Pitcavage, senior research fellow at the ADL Center on Extre Extremism. Okay, <clears throat> let me get a cap, please. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he's not actually at the ADL anymore. He is a former member of the ADL, and that is not an official ADL statement. Yep, this is not an ADL statement. This is just one person who's a research fellow at the ADL saying this in an interview with Input Mag. A and by the way, saying something that is patently, objectively incorrect, by the way. The idea that the only visual similarities between these two right here is the fact that all skulls kind of look the same. This is like a laughably, objectively incorrect statement. You know, insofar as a statement can be said to be objectively incorrect when we're referring to similarities in appearance, this is objectively incorrect. They have mentioned that the Nazi to uh, Totenkopf is a very problematic, yes. to say the absolute least, you know, logo, and that, you know, it's very highly related to racist imagery. Yeah. So, you know, when you have your logo looking this close, how does nobody check this? This is a billion dollar company, Tate. Five billion dollars. This is a five billion dollar company, Tate. Yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, oh, another thing, too. Go through this whole article. Find an apology. I dare you. I dare you to find an apology. Well, typically, apologies would come at the very end of an article after going through all their claims okay, and okay. choices. Okay. And all I see at the very end of this article is thanks, Gordon, Garga, Tomato, and Sassy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. They know that a lot of people are offended by this stuff. When they first came out, there was a lot of stuff going around on Twitter about what is this racist crap going around and why is it selling for so much money? There's something... There's something wrong here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's not like this is a new thing. No. By any means. Like, on the Gordon Garner website, he actually has, like, a, a plaster of, like, a bunch of different posts that people have made, you know, way back when... Well, I mean, it's not way, way back, but, you know, they've only been around for, like, a year or two. About people calling out the racist BS in the, in the artwork. Yeah. And about what the actual imagery means and about, you know, all the just 
horrible stuff in it. And then the Yuga Labs thing I still find... <laughs> they keep going on about this villain in Zelda. There's just some super obscure... <laughs> From a super obscure Zelda game that was only on 3DS that, like, nobody played. Like... Gordon spent a decade participating in Hinduism, and the Kali Yuga is the current era we are according to Hinduism. The ADL quite literally laughed at the suggestion that the term Kali Yuga had anything to do with white supremacy. Oh, wait, so they just admit that the Kali Yuga reference is... Wait, they just... Oh, okay. Well, there's nothing spurious about that then. They just straight up says it. Yeah. The ADL quite literally laughed at the suggestion that Kali Yuga had anything to do with white supremacy. Uh, can I get a source on that? Is there... Is, do you have a link? The last time they said the ADL did something, it turns out what they actually meant is that someone who once was in the same zip code as an ADL building. I can't help but wonder if the ADL actually spends time on 4chan at all. Because... 4chan got him real good with the 666 thing, with the, the OK being like a white supremacist thing. Like that whole thing stemmed as a joke and it ended up actually being adopted by white supremacists as like an actual thing. Wow. Yeah. So it stemmed from a joke. Media picked it up and not just ran with it. Like they, they did like a mile sprint with it. And so they just adopted it as their own. Hmm. Hmm. Sophisticated and fishy at the same time. Yeah. Oh, 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 my my favorite one <laughs> out of all of these in absurdity is Emperor Tomato Ketchup because his defense for, you know, his name is that it's the name of a Stereo at Lab album. It's a good record. It was ranked 51st on Pitchfork's list of the 90s best albums. Tomato has been an avid vinyl collector for many years and thought the name was funny. Did you bother to check to see where Stereo Lab actually found the name from? They literally said themselves it was from that movie. Dude. Delusion. Yes. Inner delusion. If you found this out, wouldn't you change... Take... I would change it immediately. Yeah, if you're if you're the one of the co-founders of a five billion dollar company, they're mocking people is what they're doing. Yeah, they find it comical and they're like, oh, we've made all this money off of this project. Let's just have some fun with what we want to do and taunt good Samaritans because evil is within. Potentially, I think so. Yeah, and it's just obviously at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. But like, yeah, this is all this is all just opinion. Yes, but you know. When you look at everything, it's pretty bad. Yeah. No, Sass chose his name because Gordon can get very sassy in the mornings with him, and it became an inside joke. That one I can kind of see. Once again, little, yeah. I, I, I will give plausible deniability there. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm not going to go against... Because it's, not, it's I, not like an absurd thing. Of course. I, I, you can't go against a lot of people's names that I mean, like... I mean, yeah. It's, it's hard to say, but yeah. I'll give him it. But Gordon Garner's name? No, that's sticking. That's, that's staying. You, you, you sure didn't know what you were doing there. Gordon Garner, Garner came from the fact that Gordon was sick and in and out of hospitals a lot over the past 10 years, over the course of which he started to think of himself as a Garner. Also, he thought that the name Gordon Garner sounded cool, like Joey, Joey Ramone. Gordon Garner? It's a pretty... I'm sorry that you were in hospitals for in and out for years on end, but... One, why would you think of yourself as a goner? And two, why would you connect those two dots? I mean, you had to see... No, I don't know. I can't believe that. I don't get it. No, I, I just can't believe that. Specifically. Yeah. So, oh, oh, this is, <laughs> this is another good one. So, Garga chose the pseudonym because he's a massive fan of the StarCraft game and hates Smurfs, which is what you refer to people who cheat the ladder system in the game. So, who, like, are, are basically bots, right? Yeah. And... That's why his bio in the BAYC site was just StarCraft obsessed, eat Smurfs. In addition, he found out shortly before BAYC launched that his wife had never seen the show Smurfs, which he thought was crazy, so they started watching it back then. Plus, his friends always rip on him for prematurely balding. Okay, but still, that doesn't... Where's the, where's the anti-Semitic stuff here? 
Like, Every- where's the mention of it, like, saying that, like, it's not anti-Semitic or something actually defending, you know, the character, right? The problem to me is that Deflection. there's anti-Semitic stuff in every single one of these persons. Yeah. That they're finding, and it might be the littlest, like, if my name was, like, Tate, you know, I mean, which it is. Dude, your like, name's Tate? Are you going to be able to pull something off my name, you know? Like, that's potentially racist. That's a question to ask. Like, is if you nickname yourself anything... We should do a post in poll on 4chan and see if somebody can find he something. Picks, he picks something on the name Tate and then find it racist in some cause. Like, it's just... It's so interesting to be able to find and depict something off of each and every single one of these creators' names. And then the fact that the lady shows up to the event in... Her black and white striped gown. Yeah. Like, come on. Well, there's also some, like, Masonic stuff that I would prefer to not go into on a striped public Striped pajamas. No, no, black and white, esoteric. Anyway. <clears throat> I look at it like the striped pajamas. I think that's what majority sure. looked at. We'll go with that. <laughs> that's the safer bet. <laughs> Yeah, too so, much evil for not enough positive. <laughs> we need to see better in this. Because oh, if- oh oh another one, the B A Y C was not launched on the day Hitler died. A reporter got the date wrong in an early article, and the troll was run with it ever since. Second, who even considers the day Hitler died when starting a company? It's such a crazy stretch. It's such a coincidence. Even though they meant it beforehand. I, I, I firmly believe there are no coincidences in this world. No. We're almost no. to the end of the article, too. But the problem is, like, all right, yes, we have another we have another replica of the Board API Club. Yep. That has, that does not have the same utility, of course, because it is a replica. But the fact that there's been hundreds of replicas in the past yeah. that have tried doing the same exact thing and just mocking up the photos. But nobody's ever been taken to court or tried to be taken to trial on this problem. If crypto is decentralized, none of this should be going on. Correct. Because yes, the photos might be the same, but the utility behind it is not the same. Correct. So it's like, it just doesn't add up. Yeah. Yeah, some, something's wrong here. Because so, somebody somebody took a dump in, in the punch bowl. Wh- what, so. I th- <laughs> what I think's happening is Yuga and the Board API Society, they're, they understand what's coming for them. And the only way they think they can stop it is by taking them to court and potentially winning with the amount of money that they have behind them. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of weird, like, other connections to draw here, too, that, like, once again, like... Throwing on some tinfoil on the hat here real quick. Um, if you look at the roadmap that Board Ape, that, that Yuga put out in late last year about their plans for the, the upcoming year, in the corner of the roadmap, there is actually a picture of, you know, Jimmy the Ape who was featured in their in their cipher game. Um, something like Jimmy, Jimmy's back on his BS and you gotta solve a cipher from that, and he was in like a game or something, whatever, right? So it says Jimmy gets sued. Uh, the chair squeaking says everything. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know. Connect the dots in the littlest ways. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's find, finding the little things to connect. Of course. Now, you know, that very well could be something else. We're just speculating here, but like at the same time, like Gorn what Garner, else does it serve? Gorn Garner's trying to wipe off the RBAYC community, <laughs> and he thinks by doing this, it will clear his name and his reputation. Is he trying though? Think about it. Why would they? Why would they decide to sue Ryder Rips for it was either ca- trademark or copyright infringement, right? Yeah. But then request a jury trial in California. Hello? Hello? Yeah. As soon as Ryder starts talking about these these apes being super racist, everybody's gonna be like, oh, nah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. 
I mean, from a pure law perspective, it's going to be far more fascinating, but because it's a jury trial, there's a lot more leeway here and what could happen. And will it get picked up, though? That's the real question. That's another question, too. Yeah, because, I mean... Writers trying to actually benefit the whole entire community. Yeah. All sides of the story. Like, you have the RBAYC, but you have BAYC, you have the other side, and you have Mutant Ape Yacht Clubs, and a couple other projects that he's creating eight markets specifically for yep. to be 0% royalty-free marketplace to trade your assets. A true Web3 marketplace. Because a lot of people really don't understand that these apes, the true ones, the Board Ape Yacht Society, the Board Ape Yacht Clubs... NFTs, they're selling for upwards of six figures each yeah. on a daily basis. Yep. OpenSea is taking probably 5% cut on that every yeah. single transaction. That's five grand minimum if it's a six figure trade. There's a lot of connections to be made here between all kinds of different celebrities, between MoonPay. I'm going to have a flow chart here of uh, all of the connections. Somebody somebody in the community put this together. I forget their name. There, I believe there is a watermark in the corner of the creator. You need to expand creator. it as big as possible so even if we're blocked, they can see the oh, whole 100%. thing. It's going it's to be full screen. Yeah. I'm going to leave that up for a good few minutes so we can do whatever with our hands or whatever time. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's insane. It is the the rabbit hole is so deep. So, I mean, it wasn't it Gordon that said he was a big fan of iceberg theory. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You get your head spinning. Yeah, exactly. So that iceberg's going to melt. <laughs> or that Titanic's going to crash and destroy it. Maybe. I mean, right. <laughs> Ryder's got a solid community behind him now. Of course. I mean, he's against. got partners with major influencers bigger than we'd ever imagined, too. Sure. Sure. I mean, it's not like he's just somebody off the streets trying to mock up something. No. He's got connects with genius. Yeah. And and he this isn't like his first foray into digital assets and NFTs no. and digital art either. Yeah. He from there's a there's a very good interview from uh OX Bunzi, which uh, I forget the name of his channel. I think it's OX Alpha. Once again, I'll have a, a link up here for it. About he basically talks about like his his history, like growing up, and you know what he was interested in as a kid, and then getting interested into digital art as a kid. And his dad was actually an artist too. And they had a bunch of Andy Warhol's work on the wall, and Andy Warhol was the guy who uh, created a sketch of a Coca Cola bottle, and Coca Cola actually sued him for infringing on their trademark that he was using their artwork without giving them royalties. Wow. It was one of the first sort of landmark cases like that. Yeah. It's almost like it was meant to be. It is meant to be. We're meant to be here today talking about this. Everything happens for a reason, Tate. Because something's, something's going to happen in the near future and everything's going to come out the way it, exactly how it should be. Yep. And I think if this this case does get picked, picked up, up that the discovery is going to be brutal for yuga yeah because i mean if you think about it, what does Ryder have to lose yeah exactly nothing i mean some money I sure mean, but money, i mean he's, he's money a, and reputation but like at the grand scheme of things i'm not going to say his reputation isn't as big as the board api community but like They have so much more at stake than he ever will. Yeah. They have more to lose than he does. Yes. A multi-billion dollar project yep. getting exposed for all their wrongdoings has a lot more at stake than one entity trying to sue somebody and actually show a statement to decentralization. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, of course. Yeah. But that's, I mean, just, that's what I see. In I it. mean, a large majority, majority of this is just our opinion. Yes. Yeah. We've read it from the... The, the letter, the response itself. Yes, yes, this is yes, all yes. just our opinion. If you believe but, in RR, B A Y C, put the RR slash in your Twitter profile. Put it in the comments too. Let's yeah. see. Let's see how many how many Rider Rips board ape holders can take around uh, to the end of this nonchalant thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's only been like 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's not too shabby. They get a little 16 year old at the beginning ranting about his experience <laughs> with it all. <laughs> Pretty much been a pleasure though buddy yeah you did great ty well, with that being said we more or less just have to wait to see how everything else spans out sure 
because I mean we dove in to a lot of the deep detail that not a lot of people I mean yes people have been talking about it and it's been circulating throughout the community but only the community really sees it yeah so basically we're just also you know helping to reach a different side of the internet too because we're both in our various you know nft communities as well a lot of people haven't heard of this yes. surprised the amount of people that actually have yeah that i just find in random twitter spaces i'm like you're in this really cool yeah neat yeah yeah like i saw uh stove in there the other day that's from crazy. Uh, from the park project yep and he was talking about it and i was like oh cool starting to pick up yeah and I just can't wait. I honestly personally can't wait for Ape Market to come out. Because yeah. that's just going to change the way that all NFTs are traded. 0% royalties, you have no fees besides Ethereum's gas fees. They're setting it up too, so it doesn't collect any personal information. Because it's fully decentralized. So why would you need personal information to fully you decentralized? The only thing you need is a, your wallet address. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. So, if... If it starts to get some serious volume traction, I don't see why anybody would want to use OpenSea again. They just got hacked again. Everybody's email got released. And sent somewhere for some sort of paycheck. Yeah. Well, okay. To be fair, I don't know if it's everybody's email. It was a large Everybody majority. Everybody and their mom's emails just got released and we ain't know what to do about it. Hey, I'm trying to not get us sued. Yo emo got released, yo emo got released, even though you don't got a Coinbase account, but yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So this has poten the potential to flip OpenSea. And because, like, Ryder even said, like, you know, right now they're focusing just on specifically the ape-centric NFTs. So anything from Yuga... Anything from Ryder's NFT collection that he's put out is going to be able to be listed on it. You have to hold a RBAYC to actually right. use the market in the I first love that. place. I love that. It's a great idea. Fantastic idea because there's only 10,000 of them. Yeah, so, it only allows 10,000 people to mint, or yeah. not to mint, sorry, to sell off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, because you have to hold it, you know, once this really starts to blow up, Ryder said that, like, you know, it, it could potentially hold, you know, more stuff than just the apes. And, you know, crypto if punks, yeah, could be crypto punks, could be, you know, every other, you know, ETH NFT in the space, because the only other thing that's like really, really focused on decentralization is looks rare. Now, when Ryder listed his collection on looks rare, it would not let him set zero percent royalties to the creator. It had to do that. He had to type in 10 percent. That was the lowest he could put in. Wow. Yeah. And then later on, he, he sent a Twitter post out that the. The 10% royalties that he's getting from the sales uh, is just going to go straight to a charity that the community chooses. Yeah. 10% too. That's insane. Yeah. You have a transaction that's worth 100 ETH. 10%. That's, that's 10 ETH, bro. That's 10K. That's 10. Regardless of yep. gas fees. Yep. You're running upwards of like 12 to 15K. Just to send something out on a bad day. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, artist royalties are going to be in any project. Of course. But it's just like exchange royalties is the big thing. Fair. fair. Them not being allowed a writer to set it to zero is yeah. the problem. Yeah. So, for instance, like com competitively speaking, um, Zeus on HBAR, they charge 2%. Which isn't bad I at all. I respect that. Yeah, That's fine. That's Of cool. course. Yeah. I think OpenSea charges a flat 5%. From what I can remember, I don't use OpenSea that often, other than to buy some more Pokemon. But you know, no shilling other projects. This is <laughs> sorry. Do you have anything else you'd like to state in this podcast, Corbin? I do not. I think we've we've summed it up pretty decently. I'm sure I'll come up with like twelve more things that I wish I would have said when I'm in the shower tonight, as we all do, when we're you know either doing a video or you get in an argument with somebody and like. I should have said that. That's the best place of thinking for me is just in the shower. I should be yeah. thinking yeah. all just like the sound ideas. of the water and everything. You just close your eyes and just sort of like just you know, think. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Corbin, do the outro. Oh, okay. Thank you for watching. Wait, I've never done the intro. I know. I was just thinking Oh, this feels it. so weird. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and with that being said, thank you for watching the Alt Kings podcast. Please feel free to tune in again for some more spicy crypto news and NFT projects up and coming. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen. Omae wa mou shindeiru. Nani?